Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Master Paul. Very happy to be connecting with you today live on Facebook live stream. Let me make a camera adjustment here. Very good. Lighting's a little off, but it is what it is. Anyway, welcome and thank you for joining me today. It's a Thursday morning here in Hawaii. It's about 9 a.m. Got up about an hour ago, so it might look like I'm a little tired. That's because it's been a rough week so far, having got back from Master Shah's event and then still recovering, stepping back in at 24-7 speed. But um, regardless of that, I'm here to serve you, and I'm grateful that you've joined us. <clears throat> and so today, for those that are just tuning in or unfamiliar with my live streams, I like to focus on things that are pertinent uh, in my life and in other people's lives. And I keep abreast of that because a lot of students connect with me. I get uh, a lot of Facebook messages and I kind of have a feeling for what's going on with them in their lives. So today we're going to be focusing on relationships and specifically bringing some resolve to them sooner than later. One of the um, There's a reason why I've chosen this subject and I'll go into that in a little while. But... Uh, suffice it to say that our family relationships are the most important relationships in our lives. They can literally rip apart a, um, a marriage. They can create great havoc in our life if we don't resolve them. And a lot of us bring a lot of baggage to our lives. And so that's why uh, I chose this. Uh, there's some other reasons which I'll go into later on in the, in the live stream. But for those that have just tuned in and are wondering what we're going to be covering today, that is what we're going to be covering. So I hope you'll stick around. Um, the live stream also may not go the full hour. It might just keep a little bit shorter. Uh, but uh, that's okay. You'll get all the good, uh, good meat on the bone. And as always, uh, a nice uh, blessing. So thank you everybody for joining. Let's check in to see who's joined so far today. Aloha and welcome Angie Taylor, welcome Trina Robella, Aloha Jose, welcome also to Tradizzle, and welcome Bob Wagner, welcome also to Christopher Ronan, and Aloha and welcome Lisa Carter, welcome Petra, Rosetta, Aloha Divjat, and Aloha and welcome to Shelly Maritza, good to see you here Shelly, welcome Paula Hyatt, and Stan Davian, Aloha Aspasia. Welcome also to uh, Jasmine Huggins, and if I missed you, forgive me, but thank you all for joining. <clears throat> Yesterday was um, uh, a rather long and busy day for me. I'm sure it was for you too. All these midweek days can be difficult sometimes. But um, one of the things that I have found that assists with getting through the day is having a lot less stress. And when we have less stress in our life, we can tend to um, go through the day a lot easier. You ever notice that? And some people are smiling. And if you ever find yourself going, why are they smiling? Well, that probably is a pretty good indicator that your day is not going as well as theirs. And it's time to check in on yourself. This is uh, where we, we tend to get lost in our own sauce. Um, I had to, to check with myself the other day because I gave back from a retreat with Master Shad. My energy is very well. And my responses to um, uh, events that happen throughout the day, things that can be irritating, you know, it's just like, uh, it is what it is. And uh, that's the exact and best place to be with, with anything because, you know, pardon the proverbial words, but shit's going to happen. And you need to be able to respond to it in the highest and best way, which is non-reactionary. You just, you, you smile and you look at it and say, mm, okay, okay. You know, I can't change it. It's done. How do we move forward in the best and highest light? That's the ideal place to be. And, uh, and then yesterday started creeping back in some little irritations. And so I had to pause and look at it. And I realized that I needed to do some work on myself. And so I made some adjustments and will continue to observe those today. So I'll share with you some of those things that we can look at to assist us because Relationships are so very, very important. We have, of course, our spouses, um, and some of us don't have a spouse. So the lack 
of relationship can create some significant stress as well. But today, specifically, I'm focusing on family relationships. That includes mother, father, children, brothers, sisters, uh, and, and potentially spouse, and if that's part of family. Welcome also to Morgana Zito. Welcome, Gunnar. Uh, welcome also to Risha Bagawal. Thank you all for joining. Thank you for clicking on the share button to let other people know about this. And so while Facebook goes out and gathers some more folks, we're going to go ahead and connect heart to heart, soul to soul, placing our hands together in soul light, soul service, hand position. And we'll drop the left hand in front of the heart center. And the right hand gently remains pointed towards heaven. Welcome, Jill. Welcome also to um, Stacy Shell. And so we're going to chant a mantra. It's called the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony. <clears throat> and this will connect us heart to heart, soul to soul, before I go into today's wisdom, teachings, and blessings. So let's close our eyes and I will call forth the beings of light. Dear the beloved divine creator, all layers of divine Tao source to original creation, creator of all life. Dear our beloved spiritual mothers and fathers, including Jesus and Mother Mary, Buddha, all the angels, healing angels, archangels, masters, ascended masters, lamas, serfus, gurus, sifu, saints, buddhas and bodhisattvas, Dear the soul of our individual heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints, we love you all, honor you all, respect you all. I bow my head to each and every one of you, and I ask most humbly and sincerely to please come at this time. Whatever way is most appropriate, offer your guidance, wisdom, and blessings for all those that attend this live stream. Please assist us to receive the higher and deeper messages regarding relationships and the importance and urgency of healing them sooner than later. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dear the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony, transmitted to all souls in all universes, love you, honor you, appreciate you. Please turn on and we invite all souls in all universes to join with us today as we chant this Source Soul Song one round to connect heart to heart, soul to soul, and we invite the souls of our family members, mothers and fathers, our children, our brothers and our sisters. We invite them to be present at this time. So as we chant love, peace and harmony, our family members will also be chanting with us to help connect heart to heart, soul to soul, and prepare for today's wisdom. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let us begin. Lula, lula, li. Lu la lu la la li Lu la lu la li lu la Lu la li lu la Lu la ha li lu la Wo ai wo xin er li Oh,爱转，热泪。当你让耳目血上，双爱平安的血。I love my heart. And so, I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. How, how, how. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you to the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony. For those that are not familiar with it, I do see some names I'm not familiar with. Welcome, thank you for joining. The Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony is actually, uh, was received, it was a heavenly received words um, 
music was applied to it, and it's been translated into 40 languages, and it is actually chanted in over six continents around the world. You can learn more by going to lovepeaceharmony.org, being a part of the solution. And the reason it's translated in over 40 languages is because, very common sense, the more of us that that speak the same words, the same energies about bringing love, peace, and harmony to humanity, the more of it will actually occur. Very simple. It's all about energy, right? So you can learn more at lovepeaceharmony.org and you can even download the music complimentary. So let's check in with everyone who has checked in the last few minutes. So welcome, Morgana. Welcome also to Jill Topping. Thank you for coming. And Aloha Erica. Welcome Jennifer Cress Smith. Aloha Christine. Uh, Mara, welcome Don Robinson, welcome um, Priska, welcome also to uh, Daniel Hansen, and Aloha Aylin, welcome Cindy, welcome Nicola, welcome Steffi, welcome and Aloha to uh, Bella Grace, and also Aloha to Rohan. Thank you all for joining, thank you for sharing. So today we're focusing on relationships specifically family relationships. Last night when I made the posting uh, for what today's live stream is about, I asked Kevin, I said, okay, what's the priority today? And Heaven's very clearly, it was a very loud statement actually. They said, you need to get people to fix their family relationships quickly. And I understood why. I didn't need an explanation. I understood why. I'll tell you why. And some of you might not like to hear it. But the reason why is because we never know when they're going to be taken away from us. At least one of you, probably five of you, can comment about how a family member, a very close loved one, a child, a mother or father, or a brother or sister, very close to you. Because not all family members are close. But some are very close. Just taken away. Gone. Not only do we never know when they'll be taken away from us, there are very, very um, significant activities happening on and around and for the entirety of Mother Earth that have to do with the shifting of humanity towards more light. And as that happens, as we move towards more light, The darkness will be revealed. Darkness shows up in the form of wars. Darkness shows up in the form of calamities. Some of you might not have put the two and two together. Actually, I didn't learn this until about 20 years ago. And I was kind of like, when I heard it, I cocked my head. But spiritually speaking, we as a collective race are responsible for all of the weather patterns. That includes volcanic eruptions. That includes hurricanes, all of that. We collectively could stop a hurricane in its tracks if all we did was focus on um, sending the hurricane love and asking for forgiveness for the conditions that brought it about. Now that might sound really hokey to a lot of you and I get that but that it sounded hokey to me 20 years ago when I first learned about it. Uh, since then I've become exceedingly educated in spiritual understandings and trust me it's very true. We collectively make the peace on our planet, not only at a verbal level, but on a energetic level. Mother Earth is a living being and her actions and reactions, her shaking or her lack thereof, the perfect weather or lack thereof is very, very much dependent upon the energetics of the human beings uh, that live on her surface. So. Why did I divest down that road? Because at this time in humanity, we are going through an upliftment. We are moving into higher dimensions, as everyone who's watching this knows. But what a lot of people fail to put um, any comprehension on or are denied the information of is that this shift um, into the light is, is forcing the vibrational negativities to come to the surface. That means the possibility of wars is possible. That means the possibility of natural disasters is possible. Because as light 
vibrates higher and higher, faster and faster. All the old has to go, and some of it's not so happy about that. <clears throat> there could be a natural disaster tomorrow. If you live in California, that's always the possible tomorrow. Other places in the middle of the U.S., hurricanes are always possible. Other places you could get snowstorms, ice storms. You could have major calamities. I don't want to be a naysayer. I certainly don't want to bring in a lot of negative energies to this. But the message is very clear. Heaven said you need to get people to solve their relationship problems with their families sooner than later. So let's focus on how we do that now that you understand the reason why I received that message. The last thing that we want is to carry forth the karma in our family relationships into our next experience. Okay, Some of you might not uh, have a belief system that there's more than one life. I honor that belief system. I certainly was not sure if there was more than one round or not when I went through my Christian upbringing. They didn't teach that. Um, I kept my mind open, kept my mind open, kept my mind open, and I've come to a belief system that there's more than one time, uh, and you may or may not agree with that. But you can look around you in your own personal experience and find family and friends, friends, people that are um, people that you know who have lost a loved one and they have so many regrets, so many things they wished they could have said or wished they did prior to the passing of that one. Why didn't they? Why didn't they fix it before then? This is a very simple answer. It's called ego. I'm right, you're wrong. Everybody cross their arms like this, right? This is me when I'm right and you're wrong. And I don't care for family or not. Screw you. I'm going to stay right. And you're going to stay wrong. And then they die. And you're stuck with that emotion for the next 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years. Does that sound like the right place to be at? There's no finishing it. We need to heal our family relationships now. Not later. That means letting go of your ego now, not later. There is no justification for ego. Now, it doesn't mean that the person, whatever they did to you that created a problem in, in the relationship, it doesn't mean that it was okay. If you were molested, it doesn't mean that it was okay. I will teach you today how to fix these things in your relationships Especially if it was not okay. But they must be fixed. Do you understand why? It's not just for the psychic uh, mindset so you don't move forward in life wondering what you could have and should have said. It's not just for that, no. It's because of the nature of the cause of law and uh, uh, the law of cause and effect. The law of cause and effect is what creates the cycles of life. You do something unto others that is good, you have good come to you. You bless others, blessings come to you. You serve others, you are served. You screw others? You have problems with your family relationships? Do you think they're just going to go away? Or do you think they will continue to bother you? They will. Our world is built on cause and effect. It is a universal law. If you have a problem with that father, that stepfather, that mother, you get along great with two of your brothers, but one of them, not so much. Big problems. Children. Two of the children you have great time with. The third one, yeah, you just keep shaking your head. I don't know what to do with this one, right? These are family relationship issues. If you do not make it a priority to deal with them, they're not going to go away. They won't because of the law of cause and effect. There is a reason why that relationship went sideways. There is a reason why you haven't talked to that brother or that sister for 12 years. There is a reason that we have difficulties in our relationships. And it's karmic. So if you understand the karmic nature, then you can fix it.
If you deal with it at the level of personality, at the level of ego, you're probably not going to get any farther than you already have, which is why you haven't been dealing with it for X number of years. Relationship problems are best dealt with at the level of soul. Relationship problems can best be resolved at the level of origination because the effect is what you're experiencing. An argument happened, they did this to you, you did this to them, blah, blah, blah. Everybody points their fingers at each other and you end up in separation. Okay, so now that's where you're stuck at. Cause and effect. Do you think this is the first time that happened? It's exceedingly unlikely. Exceedingly unlikely. In Master Shah's wisdom, everything has a soul. Not just human beings, not just animals, not just plants. Everything has a soul, and that includes a relationship. So that soul of the relationship between you and your brother that you have an issue with, or you and your father which you have an issue with, that soul of the relationship, it's not your soul, it's not his soul, it's a soul between you two. Do you think that relationship is just one time? No, 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 no. In the law of cause and effect, you and dad, you and your brother and sister, whoever you got this issue with, have been doing this around and around and around. You may have been the father before, he may have been the son before. You may have been the brother before, he may have been the sister before. <clears throat> and the reason why the argument occurred is because of the law of cause and effect, the law of karma. And if that isn't the reason, if you guys just developed a problem for the very first time in this lifetime, then it will continue in the next one if you don't resolve it now. A peaceful heart, a peaceful life is of the utmost importance. When we have a peaceful heart, when we have love in our heart for all of our family members, it immediately exudes itself into a peaceful life and assists us to maintain the other stressors that try to make us uncomfortable in life. We can handle everything else in life much, much better if our family life is peaceful. Many of us, we've had a 20-year issue with dad that did this to me or mother that did that to me or an ex-husband that, that, you know, took my wife, took, you know, cheated on me, did this, did that, took the house, the car, the kids, blah, 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 and then we hold on to this for 15, 20 years, right? Many of us have one of those kinds of issues in our life, a family relationship issue. And how do we deal with it? We cross our arms, we say, I am right, he's wrong, they are a SOB, they are a blah, 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 and we categorize it and we just push it off in the corner and we think, we actually convince ourselves that But that's not true. They absolutely affect, they affect our personality. From the moment it happened, it affected our personality. It made us close our heart. It made us uh, question other people that tried to bring love to us. From the moment it happened, we became more jaded. We became more protective. We became less of ourselves. We became more closed. <clears throat> we must resolve our family relationship blockages sooner than later because we as a human race, typically speaking, do not have the skill set with emotional expression and deeper understandings and the release of ego and all that. We just don't have the skill set. Most of us just have defensive agendas and protectionistic measures and we just trudge on through life with these protectionistic measures in place and try to do the best we can. That's not going to serve you. It's not going to serve your family. It will definitely not serve your future. So let's fix it, shall we? How do we do that? You do it by dealing with it at the level of origination. What do I mean by the level of origination? Well, very simple. If you have a mother who is constantly putting you down, constantly uh, derogatory towards you, blah, 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 guess what role you very likely played in a previous lifetime? 
Think about it. There's a reason why that person is constantly putting you down. Nah, 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 nah. Could have been a father that's like that. Could be a brother or sister that's like that. If you have a family member that took advantage of you, any number of ways, took advantage of you financially, took advantage of you sexually, okay, we can easily separate from them. I am not saying you need to reconnect with them and get all huggy and kissy. Not saying that. Very clear about this. I'm saying we need to resolve the relationship blockage at the level of soul, which is not in person. The in person part may or may not happen later if you apply the wisdom that I'm sharing with you. When you deal with things at the level of origination, the level of soul, you have a far, far, far greater chance of permanent resolve because our soul lives forever. We do not, guys. And the reason why we have these hurtful, hateful people in our life is because we possibly, and I'm not saying you have to buy into this all the way, but allow for the universal law of cause and effect to have some merit and credit in our lives. I have come to the belief system that there is always a reason for everything. Nothing is accidental. And that includes the unpleasant people that enter our lives that happen to be our family members. If they hurt us, did this, you know, I see junk here, I see abusive, I see a lot of things. It's so hard for us to imagine that we could be that way. It's just, it's just like, no, I'm a good person. I could not imagine being like that. I believe you. But you don't know. Three, four, five hundred, six hundred years ago, ten lifetimes ago, maybe you were the drunk father that was abusive to the person that is now your drunk mother. You don't know. But there is a reason that person was in your life and there is a reason they were this way. That's what you do know. And if, in fact, there's a possibility of the law of cause and effect, then that means we must take a look at that. If we have a brother or sister that molested us, okay, I can't, how can I forgive them? How do you forgive that? Very difficult. But if you do not resolve the relationship, if you carry this hatred da, 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 forward, if you've closed your heart and it has impacted you negatively, you become protective, then you haven't truly resolved it. And it will follow you lifetime to lifetime to lifetime. So I'm trying to give examples and I'm picking at straws because I don't know your personal blockages with your family, friends, relationships. But honestly, it doesn't matter. The key is to look at it and say, okay, I may have created a set of conditions some point in my life that brought this to me. You could have had parents that, that abandoned you. Okay, You may have been the one that abandoned in previous lifetimes. These are all possible. So when we do our soul level practice, we do it from this much higher conscious awareness. We do it from this much higher place of recognizing the law of cause and effect. We do it so that we can open our heart, not so that we can forgive what they did uh, and say that it's okay, so that we can forgive what they did and recognize that, that I no longer want any more of this moving forward. If they did this to me and I never did it to them, because it's hard for me to accomplish that, if they did this to me and I never did anything to them, why am I apologizing? Why do I need to give them forgiveness? Because you, in a future lifetime, may be put in a reverse role. Do you really want that? Do you want to be the abuser? Probably not. But karmic conditions lead us into these. They, it's highly unlikely they came in this life and wanted to be the abuser. It's highly unlikely. That's what they were they born as a child because they were a child before they were your parent. It's highly unlikely they came in and said, I can't wait to grow up so I can abuse my child. Do you think they grew up like that? They probably were predetermined by laws of cause and effect, how their parenting was abusive to them, etc. And this follows us through our lineages, guys. You are where the buck stops, but it starts with your intelligent awareness. You can't stop the buck until you become aware of it. You forgive regardless if you initiated it or did not initiate it. You forgive regardless without ego because you are stopping the buck. 
You are the aware one in the entire ancestral family chain that said enough is enough. I am going to heal these family blockages right here, right now. I'm going to open my heart. I'm going to release the ego. I'm going to let it go. Okay? So, how do we do that? We do it by soul communication. Everyone and everything has a soul. Their soul may have died already. They may have moved on. Okay? But it doesn't mean it, you're still not uh, affected by it. They still could be very much alive and on the other side of the country and you're not interested in talking with them ever again. Okay? That's a possibility. But it's not going to serve you in the biggest picture. <clears throat> when we do soul communication, when we do our forgiveness practices, we are not doing it in person. We are doing it at the level of soul. And trust me when I say, let's stay with the abusive parent example. I just gave you an example of an abusive parent. When they were a child born, they did not pop out of the womb saying, I can't wait to become an abusive parent. And then they go through their entire childhood waiting to become an abusive parent. It's highly unlikely that they, that they did that, right? So we must recognize that their soul, not the personality, their soul does not want you and your soul to be vindictive and to be hateful. Their soul is hoping and praying that one of you figures out this karma wheel. Their soul is praying, both of your souls are praying, that one of you wakes up and says, let us forgive each other so that we stop this wheel of abuse. Do you get it? It's really important that you get it. At the level of soul, not the level of ego, the soul is like, please, please, please. I don't really want them to act out like this. It's the karma that's causing them to act out like this. Can you please get it that you maybe have done this in previous times? And just apologize. Love each other so that we can stop this rat wheel where you're beating up on each other again and again and again. The souls try to talk to the egos. The egos cross their arms and go, oh, I'm right there wrong, blah, 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 blah. Don't do that for the remainder of your life because when you fix these relationships at the level of soul, it will positively impact your other personal relationships. It will impact your job. It will impact your finances. It will open your heart to your children, to your other family members. It will fix so many things in your life. You'd be shocked how many things that can be fixed if you truly let go and forgive. Truly let go and forgive. So let's do a practice together. Everybody sit up straight, back away from the back of the chair. <clears throat> Close your eyes. That means if you're looking at me, your eyes are not closed. And I will walk you through a practice where we can release some of these blockages. So you're gonna choose one family member <clears throat> that you have the greatest problems with, okay? And you're not going to uh, focus on the problem. We're going to focus on the soul of that family member, the light being. Believe it or not, that family member that you have discomfort with is a light being, a pure light being that very much wishes to offer and receive your forgiveness. They are not the ego, the person that you're yelling at or blaming at. So keep your eyes closed, placing your hands in soul light, soul service, hand position with your left hand over your heart center, your right hand gently pointed towards heaven. <clears throat> and repeat after me if it is comfortable. Dear my beloved soul, I love you. I deeply appreciate you, my beloved soul. Please forgive me for not aligning to you more, listening to you more following your guidance more often. Please forgive me for getting lost in the sauce of this life. I know you have probably tried to assist me to awaken to the blockages between me and my family members. I am so sorry for my lack of awakening and awareness. 
Can you please, my beloved soul, assist me now with healing blockages with my family? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, repeat, do the soul of and call forth one family member to come to sit in front of you so that their soul literally is sitting in front of you. Call their soul now. Dear the soul of, I love you, I honor you, I appreciate you. Could you please come to sit in front of me? And their soul literally comes instantly to sit in front of you. Now, I want you to see their soul, not the personality, as a light being. I want you to see yourself as a light being, not the you that you think you are. You're a light being, they're a light being. So your two souls sitting in front of each other. Now, I want you to, like you were uh, watching a TV show, review the experience that happened that created the issue. Do not get attached emotionally. You're watching a TV show as one light being watching another light being. This is an experience that happened. It was not something that you have to take so personally. Just long enough to where you understand what happened. So give it one minute. Now I understand for some of you it's a culmination of things. Now, stop. So become present. Do you think that light being on the other side of you wants to harm you as a light being? You are both beautiful, pure light beings from the same heart of the same God, from the same heart of the same Creator. Both of you have lived hundreds of lifetimes and made many mistakes in those hundreds of lifetimes. The soul across from you made some significant mistakes in this lifetime. You may have made the exact same mistakes towards them. So now we will do a forgiveness. So repeat, if comfortable. Dear the soul of, state their name. Please forgive me if I have done these same things to you that you have done towards me, if I have been abusive towards you, derogatory towards you, if I have been violent towards you, if I have talked down to you, if I have not allowed you to stretch and be all that you could be, if I have not supported you, if I have never loved you, if I have avoided you, if I have left you and did not give you my love in any lifetime, if I have done anything to you that created the problems in our relationship at any previous time that I am not aware of, please know I sincerely apologize. I cannot imagine doing any of those things, but I recognize it is possible that I may have been this way in a previous time because I now see that you're a light being and I am a light being and between us we have a relationship and I recognize that this relationship is not the very first time that we may have done this before. I wish to sincerely apologize if I created any conditions that have led to you being unpleasant towards me in this lifetime. I have found it very difficult to give you forgiveness because I have felt abused, abandoned, not loved, not appreciated. I have felt everything but what I wanted to feel from you in this life. And it has been very difficult for me to forgive you. 
I wish to apologize for not being able to forgive you. I forgive you unconditionally and I release you fully and completely of any imbalanced spiritual debt that we have between us. Please forgive me if I have ever brought these same kinds of harm to you in any other time. I will forgive you and I ask your forgiveness so that we can both heal this relationship permanently and forever. I am very grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so now visualize the beings of light that have been invited earlier. We invited Jesus and Mother Mary, we invited Buddha, we invited God, we invited all the angels, healing angels. They're surrounding both of you now. Your light beings, they are light beings. And we will chant one round of love, peace and harmony to, to further solidify this healing. I want you to see their soul singing and your soul singing and the light between you, the relationship soul being healed. Let us chant one round. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, La, Li. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula. I love my heart and soul. Open your heart. Send love from soul to soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. One more time. Continue to send love to this other soul. Release your personal ego blockages. Allow the love to heal you soul to soul. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, la, Li. Lula, lu, la, li, lula, lula, ha, li, lula, lula, ha, li, lula. I love my heart and soul. I love all you. Humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. Now, silently, in your own heart, tell this other family member that you love them, that you truly forgive them. Doesn't mean you're going to get together again in this life if it was an unpleasant experience, but that you want to completely forgive and you want to truly ask for forgiveness if you have ever brought that suffering upon them. Do this from your heart silently. Release this spiritual debt with all your heart. Give the other soul a hug. Two light souls hugging each other. Releasing blockages. 
the relationships will be between you much, much brighter, much happier, much healthier. Your soul, your heart center, much brighter, much happier, much healthier. Lots released in your own heart center. And now, return. How, how, how? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, this is a very simple practice. For some people, ah, I can't possibly have made a difference. It's just people visualizing stuff. How very wrong that is. Their soul came. They received huge, huge blessings. Your soul received huge benefits. The relationship soul between you received huge benefits. If you still feel a little of a uh, next time you see them or hear their name, you do the practice again. You continue to do the practice until your heart is free. You ask for and offer forgiveness in this way. Because if you do not address it, it will follow you. It's the nature of the law of cause and effect. It's truly remarkable the simple simplicity of this wisdom. But so many people want to deal with it at the level of ego. They want to deal with it at the level of the mind. Very rarely can relationship issues that block our life be dealt with at that level. Not with any degree of success, anyway. Because we tend to hold on to things, the self-righteousness and so forth. The pain in the heart, Upma, is called, literally it's called your heart chakra opening. When our heart chakra is open, there can be pain. When people do spiritual practices for opening the heart, there's literally physical pain because the heart is opening. So it's a beautiful representation of a successful practice. So I hope the wisdom that was shared with you before assists you in understanding how our ego can inhibit us from fixing things. We don't need to deal with our family relationships on a one-to-one, mouth-to-mouth, voice-to-voice, mind-to-mind, ego-to-ego basis. It doesn't always work out. We can deal with it at the level of soul because it follows us from lifetime to lifetime. The relationship soul between us and that person we have an issue with can be dealt with, just like this practice we just did. And if you need to do it more than once, do it more than once. Most of us do. Remember, relationships rarely are first time, especially if they're family. That means we've probably done this 10, 15, 20, 30 times. That means the depth of that blockage might need more than one practice, okay? Now, there are ways you can resolve relationship issues much, much faster. You can receive special blessings from a master teacher like myself. There's more than 150 of us that have special abilities to offer blessings that can uh, much more quickly remove relationship blockages. So if you'd like to learn more about those special blessings, of course there's a small honor fee. You can contact me directly through Facebook Messenger. I have very special uh, uh, abilities that can assist the clearing of relationship blockages much, much faster than can be accomplished on our own. So I want to thank everybody for coming. Let us offer our gratitude to Divine Tao and Source. We thank all layers of Divine Tao Source. We thank our beloved Creator. We thank uh, our beloved Divine. We thank beloved Jesus and Mother Mary and Buddha and all the beings of light, angels, healing archangels and more who came to offer their service here today. We thank the souls of all those in our relationship that gave, uh, gave us the opportunity to serve them today. We ask all the souls to respectfully return. So for those that came in late, please go back and watch us from the beginning, filled with lots of good information and a wonderful practice that can help you resolve your family relationships. I will see you next week, Tuesday. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All souls respectfully return. Gong song, gong song, gong song. Bye-bye, everybody. See you next week.